Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and if you're new to the channel then you can expect brutally honest tech reviews so make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell as I will have some more content on the newly released Mavic Air 2 as well as some fun action cameras, more stuff on the Mavic Mini and lots of random tech and gadget reviews in the future. So in today's episode, this is my best tips and settings for the Mavic Mini to improve your overall flight experience, to really tweak the settings and get the most out of this little drone. As of April 2020, they did actually release an update which enables us to have more control over the manual settings. So I will actually get into that a little bit later in the video, but for now let's talk about the auto exposure and the EV. So the EV and the AE, which you'll see in the bottom right of the screen right now. So EV is your exposure setting and AE is auto exposure. So if you leave the auto exposure, then your scenes will start looking very odd as the lighting condition changes. You'll notice a significant change as the drone tries to automatically expose the scene. So what you want to do is you want to adjust the EV to a point that you're really happy in different lighting conditions. So make sure that you launch your drone, look around and see what EV really fits nicely as your drone's moving. And then you just want to lock your auto exposure so that it doesn't automatically start adjusting the exposure. So that's something really important that you can just use in the automatic settings to get really the most out of the video quality to make sure that it's not adjusting all the time. So that's a really important thing. Adjust your EV to the lighting condition and then lock your auto exposure or your AE in the bottom right corner. Very simple to do and it will improve your footage significantly if you've been relying on the auto exposure so far. The next thing that I always recommend is enabling the histogram. Now a histogram can be a little bit confronting so make sure that you research how to actually read a histogram. But basically on the left hand side of the histogram are the shadows, the middle section is the midtones, and the right hand side is the highlights. So basically you want to avoid highlight and shadow clipping. So you want to make sure that the peaks aren't off to one side significantly or off to the other side. Because what will happen is if the peaks touch either side, then you'll lose detail in the video. The next thing that I enable straight away on my drone is the grid lines. And this just gives you a true understanding of the rule of thirds, which is basically a three by three box on your screen to show you what's in frame, what's off to the left third, what's in the center, what's off to the right third. And it really just gives you an understanding of the framing. It's a little more visual and easier for me to digest. So that's my own personal preference. If you don't like the intrusive boxes, then you don't have to do that. But that's personally really helpful for me. Another relatively intrusive thing that you might not want is the overexposure warning. And this is something that I always seem to do because it will tell you what's overexposed. And it will do that through a zebra or a zebra pattern. Let me know in the comments below, is it zebra or zebra? What do you prefer? And that will actually tell you what's overexposed in the scene. And it's really visual, really easy to see. And those zebra or zebra patterns will not display after you've actually recorded the video. It's just for your own visual representation while you're out on the day shooting. Today's episode has been proudly sponsored by TechScore. They aim to be everyone's one-stop destination for finding the best tech deals right as they occur online. And they have a really wide range of partners that you can actually shop through. So they have Gearbest, Walmart, Amazon, Microsoft and AliExpress, just to name a few. And basically if you purchase through the TechScore site, then you actually have cashback rewards which can be redeemed for daily prizes. So it's a really awesome way to buy your tech because you're then getting rewarded for buying the tech that you already would be buying and you're going through trusted merchants. So it's a really secure, fun way to buy your tech. And if you actually sign up now with my link in the description below, then you can specify that you were referred by danstube.tv. So then everyone wins and we can all make some money back together as we're buying our regular tech purchases for the year. The next thing that I'd really recommend about the Mavic Mini is something that you need to be a bit mindful of, be a bit careful here, but you can hand launch and hand catch with ease. It's so easy to hand launch the Mavic Mini and to catch it. Just be really mindful though that this can be dangerous, so be careful as you're doing it. But all you have to do is hold the Mavic Mini, 
press and hold the takeoff button and then it will just glide out of your hands. When it comes to hand catching it though, make sure that you bring it down to a low enough level, press and hold the land button and then as it starts the descent down to the ground, you put your hand underneath it and grab the body of the drone and then sometimes you actually still have to accept on your screen that you want to land or you need to pull down on the left stick to land. But for the most part, you'll catch it and the motors will disengage and it's a really safe, easy way to do it as long as you're very careful. So since the update in April 2020, we now have more control over the manual settings. So you can adjust the shutter and ISO and this is something again that you should probably educate yourself on more. Just search manual settings for cameras and just really get your head around how to adjust the shutter and the ISO. So the shutter should always be a multiple of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 25p, then make sure that your shutter is either 50 or 100 or you know 150 or 200. And if you're shooting at 30, then make sure that it's either you know 60 or 120. And just be mindful that it's always a multiple of your frame rate. Otherwise, you will get a bit of kind of stuttering and the footage won't be as smooth. And then when it comes to adjusting the ISO, that's something that you can adjust with the histogram in mind. If you enable the histogram and play around with the ISO, then you will see what happens to the histogram and you can get it to a point where all the peaks are working nicely and the image looks really clean. Another important setting in my opinion is the return to home altitude. So by default, it's actually really low. So if you do press return to home, then it'll be returning to home at like 30 meters, which as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, some trees or buildings or you know whatever it may be that's kind of dangling out of the earth, that can be higher than 30 meters. So if you've automatically returned to home, there's a high possibility that you might actually hit something. So what I always do is I adjust my return to home altitude to either 60 or 80 meters so that you can avoid tall structures and trees. Another really important setting for people out there that want to ensure that their footage is always smooth and looking clean is enabling the Cine Smooth flight mode. And this just ensures that you don't get any abrupt stops or any sort of jarring motions. It will actually gradually slow the drone down so that the footage looks as cinematic as possible. So make sure that you set up Cine Smooth if you want to take any of the guesswork out of your drone footage. It will just ensure that the footage always looks cinematic. If you also want to ensure that your gimbal movements look as smooth as possible, then you can adjust the pitch speed and the pitch smoothness. And this just ensures that it is, again, a very cinematic, gradual movement when you're adjusting the gimbal. It's not jarring and it doesn't put your audience off, which I've seen a lot of footage out there and it's very jarring and the movements are way too abrupt. So if you change your pitch speed to 15 and your pitch smoothness to 15, then that's what I've noticed has been the most kind of smooth and manageable settings to have. Obviously you can adjust this yourself and get it to a point that you're happy, but just playing around with the pitch speed and pitch smoothness of the gimbal is really, really important. You can also enable the upward gimbal rotation, which actually gives you a lot more room to play with. It means that you can tilt your camera up further than zero degrees and get an interesting angle pointing upwards. So if your drone is nice and low, then you can point a little bit further up and maybe get you know, the sun coming through the trees or your subject in focus, whatever it may be, this just allows a little bit more rotation as you are tilting upwards. The next tip is really crucial to ensure that you get as much range as possible out of your Mavic Mini. So what you can do is you can go into the transmission settings, you can change it to the manual channel mode and then you can basically just have a look at how much interference is occurring in each channel. So you have to do this before you actually take off. You have to do this as the drone is on the ground and you can see how much interference is in the area. And then you just choose a channel that has the least interference and you'll notice that you get a lot more range out of your drone. This is something that you want to adjust for different locations as different channels will have different interference depending on where you are. But this is a really important setting to get used to as it can actually significantly increase the range and the performance of your drone. The next tip is a basic one, but it's something that I will monitor occasionally. Basically, you can tap the battery icon in the top right corner and you can monitor the temperature and voltage of the battery just to make sure that the battery battery health is on point. Anyway, internet family, that's the end of my best tips and settings for the Mavic Mini to ensure that you have the most optimal, most enjoyable flying experience with this tiny little drone. I'd love to know in the comments below if you have any other tips or settings that you can recommend to myself or to the audience out there that will be consuming this content. But that's it. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell for more brutally honest tech reviews and useful tech reviews in the future. So thank you so much. Make sure to have a great day and peace out.